Stand some lover, no, so bad. Feel so lonely, and I feel so sad. What appeals to me about the project, the A Little Sugar project, is that it's phenomenally produced. Like, it's really impeccable from beginning to end. And that is, it's one of the things I try to make sure everything on the label goes out that way. So first off, that, you know, the singing, the playing, the arrangements, they're all just spot on. You want to get it, you want to get it right, and you want to get it musically right, not just acceptable, but exceptional. Uh, you know, it just, recorded impeccably, so um, I just knew it was going to be special. So the minute I got in the studio, I was like, okay, this is the real deal. We're going to do this, and we're going to do it right. And I think it's been done right. It's a fantastic sounding album. Oh, Papa, look what you're doing, look what you're doing. The concept was to get it live. The whole band was essentially live out in the studio. So it was important to get a sense of, um, of an ensemble. You, can, you always can tell when something's like so edited and every note, oh, the bass is a little bit here. That's, and we didn't get into that. So it's really natural. It was great. Um, enough flexibility for us to find ourselves and enough, um, you know, time, the pulling of the reins so that we, that we were, stayed focused and in character of the song. One thing I said to the horn players when we got together is I said to them, you know, you guys, I know you can all play a lot of notes, but instead of playing a lot of notes, let's think about the original reason you got into jazz what was the who was the person that you listened to that just when you first heard jazz what was it about it that got you you know that really grabbed you and that person that was playing what was the essence of that please play from there They did a great job as well, um, and Rich took a really great front lead in just sort of interpreting the material, um, I think, you know, uh, really accurately according to the time period. For the older style of jazz, I love to use every single sound that's available to me, which is usually by putting a mute or your hand or a, a you know, plunger, so I always try to color my sound. It sort of always makes your solo a little better when you know the lyrics. I think Lester Young learned the lyrics to everything. And that's kind of my secret is whenever I hear the topic, I'm always listening to the words, listening to the meaning and trying to bring either the comedy or the lightness or the heaviness to the, uh, to the songs. A musician who has played in a variety of styles, whether they're casual parties, big bands, free jazz, bebop, 
knows the arc of the music and what's correct. And if you don't, you know, you do your homework, you find out what needs to be done. And I think everybody took that task to hand. They're playing in a quite an authentic style that's almost like the old style. But there's a, the modern twist has to do with just how the mindsets are of the musician. I can hear that on there. And I love that that, that meeting of the past and the present and capturing really the spirit, the fun spirit of that 1920s prohibition era music, which was really a way to enjoy oneself during a depression. We decided to actually record two albums at the same time, which is what we did. We recorded 26 songs in three days. When she first called me, she said, yeah, we're going to have three days in the studio. And I went, oh, great. You know, that's that's enough time to cut an album. That's, you know, and I know the players, most of them, and they're really good. So I'm sure it will go fine. And then she said, by the way, we're recording two albums. At first we thought this is going to be daunting because there's a lot of arrangements. There's a lot written out in that music, a lot that has to be played correctly. But actually, you know, because we were um, recording a lot in a short amount of time, there wasn't, I felt like, well, at least from my perspective, from, from my playing, I had to play in a very focused manner. And man, I think we did, each tune was a take. I think, I, I think maybe some of the tunes we spent, we did three takes at the most on one tune. So they were almost all of them first takes. Next song. Next song. <laughs> Try to make each one as good as you could. That was a lot of music. They were really, really well organized, so it's great to do that. I mean, I, I, love, I love when things are efficient, you know, when the, when the arrangements are organized well enough and you've rehearsed, then you actually can think about the how instead of the what. There isn't a lot of time wasted and spent on, wait, where's the, we, where, where do we go next? And everybody really dug in. I mean, there were some long days there. Um, but it came off really well, you know, uh, that's, that's the, one of the joys of working with a great musician. When the sun is shining, there's a time to make hay. I've seen some mobiles operate, you can make that wagon pay. You are in your prime. You love to run around You've been a good old wagon, honey, but you done broke down. Gary actually was the first person that told me about the studio. I'm really happy that we ended up here. There's a lot of great studios in the Bay Area. A lot of my friends own great studios, and I, I love them all. For this particular project, though, this, this space just felt like the right space. This place was probably the best one we could have chosen to do it in, because the room is huge. Most recording studios these days can't afford any kind of real estate, so you tend to work in a small room, which is why, in part, things are done piecemeal. But here, the room was large enough that it, it adds a sound of its own, and this room sounds really good. So it just enhanced the performance and gave it more of a, a period sound in the sense that the old recording studios tended to be big rooms like this. The studio that she chose uh, to record in was a perfect choice because it really enhanced what we were doing musically. The tools were here. It was really easy to get that big warm sound because that's the kind of gear and microphones that they have here. It was a really great session. A great studio too. She booked the best the place I've ever recorded in. So. Oh, rocking chairs got me. Came by my side. Fetch me that gin sun. Well, I'll tan you high. Can't get from this cabin. Round my rocking chair 
I think the whole session was actually really nice and effortless, and I feel like we played it, and it's not this heavily edited affair. It's very easy. Well, it's got the right players, people who understood the music and what knew what needed to be played. Roberta's ability to navigate a large creative ship of people and get it to get it to shore not only safely but like everybody's you know they don't want to get off the boat it's like okay we docked but can we get back out there and do it some more please <laughs>